Yes, what are you doing? <laughs> the population is like 79 now. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Or you can do a solo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, look, we're waiting for you to sit down. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to AUMC this morning. I am Scott Lehman, the I about said building commissioner, but I am not that today. <laughs> I am. And the fire marshal. And the fire marshal. I missed a little of everything. And we want to welcome you here to uh, AUMC this morning. We're glad you're here. Uh, we're glad for the beautiful weather and uh, everything God has given us. Let's see what we have here. Uh, Pastor Tim's 403 small group is meeting Wednesdays at 6.30 in the gathering room. He'd love you to have, uh, him and Deb would love for you to come. Uh, we have uh, Powers Church has a, a program on the 25th of August with the Sweet Adelines, which would be really, really great to go to. And uh, our church, uh, some of our council members met with uh, a couple ladies uh, this past week and interviewed them for the church secretary position. We're going to talk to a couple more this week. so. Uh, we'd like to get somebody in place with that for the, in the next week or so. I, I was looking through this this morning and I, I saw something that caught my eye and it's something I pray about every day. And it's expect divine appointments in your life and that's something I pray for every day. That God brings somebody to me that I can help, that needs help. And I hope that we all pray that because there's a lot of people out there that, that need our divine help. So uh, let's pray and, and uh, get things started this morning. Lord Jesus, I, I just thank you for this congregation. I thank you for our church. I thank you for our denomination. Lord, I just pray that you would be with us all and guide us all. Lord, there are several uh, in this church that are hurting today. And Lord, I just pray you walk with them and talk with them and just guide them in the right direction. Lord, I pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And would you please rise for our first hymn?
as you go ahead and have a seat. Mr. Zach is going to take the kids out. Roman and Stella. All right, time for you to go. He needs fervor of prayers. Lord, help. The greatest prayer you can pray. For one of the greatest. Um, we do have uh, some prayer requests that I want to make you aware of. Uh, my, this comes from Michael and Tammy. Uh, Michael's parents, Earl and Nancy, are moving this week from an independent uh, apartment to assisted living in Bryan, Ohio. Uh, they need prayers for a successful move, and I'm sure Michael and Tammy need prayers as they help them make a successful move. So, I want to pray for that. Travel prayers for Leslie and Josie Hall. They left this morning uh, with the local Girl Scouts for a three-day event in Mackinac Island. Or Mackinac. Uh, Mackinac? Mackinac? Yes, Mackinac. Um, then uh, we want to uh, pray for the Beyond the Walls ministry, or appropriately enough, the Scouts, uh, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, and Cub Scouts. Uh, we're praying for the choir already. So, thankful for our choir and that they're going to be back soon. Uh, I am actually the staff person that we're praying for. My wife's been gone, so I need prayer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, we want to pray for uh, the Helmer Community Church and Pastor Donna, and then also the Old York Church and Pastor Sam and Serena. And uh, then, of course, we want to lift up uh, the Crumb family in our prayers. Uh, it's been a hard time uh, for them. They lost, I think most of you know, they lost Amanda, uh, their daughter, 42 year, years old, on Wednesday. Uh, and uh, so we just want to pray for them. Uh, I've passed out uh, several, or I mean, I sent out uh, the funeral arrangements. Uh, they'll be calling at White's uh, from 5 to 7 tomorrow evening, and then uh, on Tuesday at 10 o'clock with the service at 11 o'clock. Uh, so if we could just be lifting them up and praying for them, uh, that would be that would be great. Uh, if you're a visitor with us, we're, we're thankful that you're here. It, are there any other praises or prayer things? Yes, Linda. Um. On Tuesday, my son-in-law, Steve Pittman, had a heart attack while he was playing tennis. Okay. So your son-in-law, Steve, had a heart attack while he was playing tennis on Tuesday. On Tuesday. He's, he has did, and he's now home. He's home. And on Thursday, my other son-in-law had a stroke. Your other son, and his name is? Todd Klaus. Oh, Todd Okay. And he's, he was on a business trip, and so he's still in the hospital in Lorraine, Ohio. Okay. But Jody said today that he was grouchy and ready to go home. <laughs> well, that's a really good sign when you're in the hospital. You're grouchy and you're ready to go home. Yes, Adele. Prayers for Susan Mary, who's recovering and looking at the Lord. Yeah, she broke up. Uh, she had a couple of falls and, and had a few breaks, uh, but one was her shoulder that um, we need to pray for her and her husband, Tom. Uh, what else? Yes, Rob. My son, Charlie, uh, is out of Washington State. He's had a big time. Oh, three miles. Okay. So Charlie lives, at, Rob and Jan's son lives in Washington State, and there's a big fire. Uh, near him. So the wind has shifted, so it's going away from him. It's only three miles away. The wind has shifted, it's going away from him, uh, but it's only three miles away from this house. So let's be praying for that. Renee. Brandon has 
been staying at the Promise House in Kendama. Well, now he's willing to go to the next step, which is a year program, and it's right on Main Street in Kendaville. And he really likes it there. I take him, and I had him, you know, here for the weekend. And, I mean, he's, he's is is the year program a residential program? Yeah. Okay. So he's not coming home to stay with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've really been praying for. But he won't boomerang back on you. Yeah, I can't do that. Any anything else? Yes, dear. Just so glad to have Craig and Jean Clark back with us yeah. this week. It's good to have you guys here today. Good to have all of the visitors here. Anyone else? Yes, Sue. Good news. Doug is getting better. He still tests COVID. Right. Doug and Jenny Stuckey, I don't know that I sent this out, they uh, had been on a mission trip to Samaritan's Purse. Well, Doug came home and he actually uh, had COVID and, uh, when he got home. And, and so they were dealing with that. I think Jenny, uh, they, she didn't test, but, uh, or she tested negative, but she wasn't feeling well either. Uh, but they're uh, both on the road to recovery. So we're thankful for that. Um, as I was thinking about the prayer time today, uh, I thought of Martha. Uh, Martha from Mary and Martha. You know, and, and I, the scripture describes her in uh, Luke 10, at the end of Luke 10. Uh, Jesus shows up at their house with all of his disciples. And she's fixing the meal, you know, and worried and bothered and uh, trying to take off care of all the details and gets frustrated. And, and Jesus says to her, you are worried and bothered about many things. Just one thing is necessary. And um, anybody ever feel like Martha? I, I was feeling like Martha some this week. I have plates spinning in every place. And it feels like that, that you know, if I don't keep them spinning, they're going to fall. And, and when you're bothered and when you're distracted, it's hard to center in on Jesus. And sometimes we just need to let loose of things. Uh, we need to let things go. And so during part of the prayer time, uh, we're going uh, to do that. I'm going to have you hold your hands like this and uh, mention several things that we might need to let go of. Then I'm going to have you turn your hands up, palms up, to receive what God has for you. But uh, uh, let's sing the prayer song first.
thank you that we can come to you. We can come to the throne of grace. We can come boldly to you, knowing that we will find grace and help. That we will find mercy in the midst of whatever it is that we're dealing with. God, we give you praise for that. Lord, we do have so many requests. God, so many have been mentioned here. And uh, Lord, I, I know that some of those have uh, resonated with us. Uh, God, as some of us, uh, you, you know, Lord, have have been gripped by their prayer requests that we've been that we've heard. And, and God, we want to lift those up to you right now. Uh, brothers and sisters, would you just pray for one or two of the requests that have been made today? Uh, all of life 
in the home, in the workplace, uh, in the community. Uh, God, we want to receive from you the blessings that you have for us. We don't want this of one. Lord, we want to receive your forgiveness. Lord, help us to be in a posture to receive. God, we know we need your input in our lives. So Lord, pour out your mercy and your grace upon us and God, may we receive it in your precious name. Now, brothers and sisters, would you pray with me the prayer that the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
We please stand for this morning's scripture. The scripture this morning is from the Acts chapter 16, verses 13 to 21. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the woman who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Tarad named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond in Paul's message, to Paul's message. When she said, when she and the members of the household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. Once, when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and they are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. This is the word of the Lord. Very self-explanatory. 
The troubling part is where you, you have this girl who is falling all around. Now, uh, this is the research that I did. She would most likely have been a prophetess of Apollos. So they took a, a virgin girl and they would dedicate them to the god Apollos. And, and she would like to be given this gift. So a spirit would talk to her about the future. Everybody okay with that? Oh, we're doing great. Okay. Uh, and the thing is, it was accurate. So I just want you to chew on that. Just sit with me in the uncomfortable weirdness of this passage. Alright? They did this ritual, but it worked. Because as he's walking around, she's like, hey, this guy follows God. What he's saying is true. He's showing you the path to life. That's what she was saying behind him for several days in a row. She's prophesying. And it's true. Figure out what to teach about that. <laughs> what they say about Paul in this passage is that he's hurt. He spent several days listening to this girl. But I think, man, what, what a great deal if you showed up to a city and, like, somebody that people listen to who has authority to speak to those people, they listen to her. They know what she says is true. It's following you around going, listen to these people. They show you the way of life. That would be quite an advantage in a, in a place. Um, apparently not an advantage several days later. You know if you've ever taken a long car ride with, with a teenager or the like who just repeats the same thing over and over again, but eventually you think, I'm going to let you walk the rest of the way. <laughs> and that's the impression that I get reading this, okay? This is all opinion. That's what I'm saying. This is an opinion. This, all this has been like somebody else is teaching. I don't know. Uh, we'll talk more about it. He turns and tells the spirit to be quiet and go away. Which he can do. And it does. Well, that causes a problem because that's sort of her job, is to tell the future. Um, so that ruins his relationship with her owners. Everybody on board? They are upset. They bring them before the court. He essentially ruined an asset of theirs. I mean, we would never, we wouldn't talk this way because we don't have a context right now for what that is. But if you if you owned a dog that could track, and all of a sudden somebody ruins their smell, you'd be upset. Well, that was the thinking. Here, this young girl is, and she's owned by these men. She's ruined by Paul. And, and, I, and I want to point this out uh, so that you can sit in the mess with me. This does not say out of righteous indignation or due to God touching his heart with compassion or because of his love for this girl. No, it says he's annoyed, so he tells the spirit to shut up and to go away. All can have a bad day, too. <laughs> well, I guess I say that to go like, I don't know why he did it. And it's not written, so why would any of us speculate? How many decisions do you make a day? You don't even know why you make them. You just make them. Him, too. So why would I teach you what I think he might have thought? <laughs> you know, because we're like three brings away from anything. It's nothing if I speculate. Speculatory teaching is not teaching. It's a fairy tale. I might as well say once upon a time before you. So I don't want to do that with you. I want to tell you, I don't know what this is. I don't know why he did it. I don't know what it accomplished. I don't know if she was saved afterwards. I do know they got a beating for it. Uh, so it didn't work out so good for Paul. 
but she couldn't prophesy after this. When we teach and when we, when we share what God has given us, we share out of experience, or we ought not to share at all. So, uh, a really heavy uh, lesson for me this week. If you neither love nor forgive, then you have no authority to share about loving and forgiving God. Regardless of whether it's true. Think about it. Just think about it. Your parents gave you lessons when you were growing up. Some, they were following. And some, they were not. Some, they said, do as I do. And some, they said, don't do as I do. Do as I say. And all the lessons that are do as I say, you ignore. Yes? You ignore unless you want to do something different. Why? Because they have no authority to speak on something that they have not experienced. Right? It's a huge, uh, this is just one for instance, it's a huge percentage of smokers that their parents smoke. Like most. Why? Would their parents say, smoke like I smoke, you'll really like it. No. no. Especially 20, 30 years in, most people are like, don't ever pick one up. Don't ever. But they can't teach that. Why? Because they're smoking. And no matter what you say, what you're showing them is something else. And so why don't we take this? Take this, please. Put this teaching on the gospel. And say, if you're trying to share the love of Christ, but you have no love, then there's nothing to share. You've got nothing to say. If you harbor grudges against your fellow men, do not expect people to understand the forgiveness of God. You don't. Does it matter whether it's true or not? It doesn't matter whether smoking is bad for you or not. What you're showing them is something else. We must be the message that we are trying to speak to the world. If we don't become it, then we have nothing to say. Yes? Yes. Ooh, they love it. <laughs> The most, uh, the, the most difficult area of this for me is in parenting right now. Because I, I can't just teach them things. I can become a different man in order to teach them the things that I want them to be. I can't just say, be better than me. I have to be better than I was. Well, that's hard work. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping just to, you know, give them advice based on, you know, don't do this because that doesn't work out so good. You can't do that. You have to become different. The areas that, that God has impressed this on me is when Jesus is, is doing these I am statements. It's very confusing. Nobody teaches that way. I am the way. Why would you say it that way? I know the way. That's a sentence. I am the way. It's confusing, even to an Eastern audience. To a Western audience, it's completely bewildering. You are the way. No, you know the way. But he had become. He had become the way to God. And so he could say, I am the one.
He didn't just know the truth. He was the truth. He didn't just know life. He had become life. And although it would be much easier if we could go, that was Jesus. It wasn't that great for him. We are co-heirs and meant to inherit the life that Jesus spoke about. Are you about to then? <laughs> you are to be able to say, I am the way. Not I know the way. Like if they follow you and do what you do, they will go the way. Well, how did you learn the way? By following the way? By following Christ. But it's not enough to know. You must be calm. Knowing doesn't change your actions. As we become it, it changes our hearts. And so what we've spoken about in one of the studies that we're doing it's like and if you are a dog kicker, I know I don't want to step on any toes. If that is your life, if you're a dog kicker and you decide one day I will not kick the dog anymore, that's fine. Okay, good for you for not kicking the dog. But if you stop kicking the dog but you still want to, there's still a problem, <laughs> right? You're ready for not kicking the dog, but if you still want to, we've got some issues. Look, what you want is to not want to kick the dog. Right? Well, that takes a heart change. That's not just a behavior change. And we spend way too much time on behavior, when if you would change your heart, it will change your behavior. And you can only change your heart by becoming the thing that you need. Very important. So I was wrestling with God on what, what do I do about love? I, I cannot love these people. Not you. Other people. <laughs> people are, and you know the people. Uh, like how do I, I cannot love these people. What am I supposed to do? And he says, you, you can't love. And I said, yeah, that's what I said. He said, no, no, don't love anymore. He said, I am trying to love. He said, that's not how I do it. Well, how do you do it then? He said, I don't love. I am love. Oh. Well, I don't know what that means. But from that time, I said, I want to become. I want to become love. I don't want to love anymore. I want to I want to be it. See, if you do a thing, then that means sometimes you don't do a thing. And so if you choose to love, that means sometimes you don't. If love is an action, then there's, you know, times where you're not doing that action. But if you are a thing, then you are it. When you have a child, you are, you are a mother. Yes? yes? You feel like, okay, today, right now, I'm choosing to be a mother. <laughs> you never get to take that hat off again. That's not how it works. Morning, noon, or night, you're a mom all the way. This is the same. Don't choose to love, become. Now, this is the part that's a little dicey, is that everybody's path to become love is going to be a little different because your experiences up to now are not my experiences. What you need to do to become it, God will lead you through. If you ask Him to become love, it's a really good prayer. He'll answer you. 
but it will lead you through a process of becoming. It's a part of my process, which will not, it will not pertain to everyone, was to love and accept myself. And if I did not love and accept myself, I could not love others. And I taught that to you. If, if love your neighbor as yourself means you have to love yourself, or you will not love your neighbor, because you will always love your neighbor as you love yourself. So you have to actually become the thing, and, and you have to receive it to become it. And so I spent several weeks learning to love and accept who I am. And saying, truly, I love, I love who I am. I grew up in a tradition that said, if you, if you say things like that, you'll, it'll lead you to pride. And that was a lie. It, uh, they were trying to help, alright? Nobody was trying to hurt me. But they were under the impression that if you like yourself, you, you may end up thinking that you're big stuff. And that's so goofy. That's so goofy. That is bad for cautionary tales. Any, any action that you take based on fear or worry is a bad action. That's the wrong motivation. Don't do this or else this might happen. All right. Don't base it on fear. Base it on logic. Base it on decisions. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. Okay. So the the first step for me was was self love and self acceptance. During that time. God showed me this, uh, this really amazing car in my mind, all right? And he's teaching me about love, and this is how he does it, so deal with it. He, he shows me this, like, it's just this perfect car. Um, and it, I can't describe it to you, it doesn't matter. It, imagine your version of a perfect car. It was that. He said, this, the, the model that I've made your life in is perfect. You, as I've made you, are perfect. Right? The model of the car is that there's no flaw in it. But, uh, once a driver gets in it, sometimes some weird things happen. <laughs> Who I've made you to be is, is perfect. But sometimes, you did not read the manual on it. I want you to deal with this. And so you've driven poorly. And then, often, often, we attach value or devalue to uh, the car itself based on the driver. Like, look, you just made some mistakes. That has nothing to do with who you are. Are you with me? Well, if you detach behavior from who you are and your value, all of a sudden having value is much easier to do. And when you're looking at it, saying the model is perfect, all of a sudden you want to figure out how do I drive it perfectly? Because it's meant to be driven perfectly. Well, that's a lot easier to do when you already believe that it is perfect. That your life and that uh, the model that God made in you is perfect. Is everybody on board? Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> well, he taught me that about myself, but then he taught me it about other people. And you can stop seeing their behavior and their, their weird stuff that they're doing and start seeing that they were made perfect. Flawless, without knowledge. We call it the image of God. They were made in the image of God. They were made with God's image on them. So to criticize that would be just not the right thing to do. 
That's not what we want. And so as, we see, as I was seeing value in myself, I'm also seeing value in other people this way. And you start to really cherish what God has made in other people. So he made that flip for me and said, you, you have now, you've become this. Now you don't have to choose love. Now you are love. And it really, it really changed my life. It has continued to. But right, that happened right before we went to Zambia. Which was about a month ago. And when we went, we went to a pastor school. And we're teaching at a pastor school. And everywhere I went, I began to see God's image on the people that we were with. It's a brand new way to see people. It's so much easier than to see their circumstance or to see their behavior or to try to understand their culture, which are all huge barriers generally to relationship. Well, what if you skipped all that and you just went like, I'm going to see the perfection that is this person. Now, automatically, I'm predisposed to be extremely interested in them, but also like, I really care about them. And we got to skip all the external steps that would normally be a hindrance. And so connection was very fast with these men and women that I've never met from a place that I've never been to that speak a language I could not begin to understand right now. And so when I say don't, don't love, become love, I can say it from a different place than I could have two months ago. Two months ago, I would have asked you to modify your behavior because I didn't know any better. I did it. That's what I was trying to do. Change your behavior and then, and then you'll be a better person. No, no, no. It's not going to work. It doesn't, does it? Just because you don't kick the dog doesn't mean you don't want to. Well, I know it's funny, but it's the problem with like when we go, if you're an addict now, you've always been, and you always will be. No. <laughs> it's not a trickle. You can ask for your heart to be changed about this. And change is really possible. We can be transformed by God for real. Which is what the Bible says. But it wasn't my experience in a lot of areas. I know it's true. I just don't know that it's true. Well, this is how it works. That each area of your life that you go, man, I really want to be this. God is asking you not to change your behavior in it, but to change who you are. By realizing that you carry God's nature, that you actually... <laughs> uh, this is my understanding of it. The love that, we, that I have right now, the love of God that I have right now, that I have become, I already had it before. I just did not realize that it was there. It was there, but untapped. The ability to love this way was there. This was the deal I see. The things that you want to become, God has called you to become them. You actually already have what you need. You just got to dust it off and use it. And you do that in relationship with God. He shows you the way to get where you need to go. There's always a process. Generally, there's several steps to it. This is a journey. This is why faith has to be a lifestyle. If you only change when you show up here, your whole life will be the same your entire life. 
Now are we not going to do that? In the same way if you went, I'm going to diet for an hour a week. And I'm going to be so skinny. Oh, man. I'm picking out the bathing suit right now. It's not going to work. This is either your lifestyle or it's not. How bad do you want what you know God has wanted you to become? How bad do you want it? Do you want it enough to become the change that you want to see? Did you pray with me? God, I thank you for the way that you designed us. That you have made us perfect. And I pray that we would realize the perfect design on our lives. That we give you credit for that. Because it came from you. God, may we bless the creation that you've made in ourselves and in others. May we become the way. May we embody the gospel that we want to share. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with us as we sing our closing?
And that's the blessing that I have for you this morning. That you become, that you become the gospel that we want to see come alive in our town, in our cities, in our nation. Bless you.